Hi, I'm Dr. Margreet Barnard, your host of the Birth and Baby Show, brought to you by Sister Lillian Center and Sensitive Midwifery. We empower moms, midwives, and birth workers to have the best birthing and parenting experience through natural, physiological, and intuitive care, resulting in birth and baby advice you can trust. This episode is proudly sponsored by Cura Then. Curaden aims to create 1 billion healthy mouths because a healthy mouth equals a healthy body and mind. Curaprox Baby gets your child on the right path by starting healthy oral care habits for life. Our products are designed by specialist dentists. The Curaprox Soother supports the normal development of gums, teeth, palate and jaw and also ensures optimal nasal breathing. The Curaprox teething ring with integrated training toothbrush helps your child prepare for the day they start brushing their teeth. Curaprox baby teething ring also promotes the development of sensory and motor skills. The Curaprox baby toothbrush gives the gentlest care to your child's precious teeth. The toothbrush makes cleaning teeth fun and joyful. A quick note to the adults about your oral care. It's crucial to balance your oral microbiome. It prevents oral disease and reduces bacteria from entering the bloodstream. Thus may prevent heart attacks and strokes. Join the movement. Let's create a billion healthy mouths, which will result in a billion healthy bodies and minds, making oral health contagious. Visit www.curaprox.co.za. Hi, and welcome back to another episode. And thank you so much for our faithful listeners or watchers. Um, We really appreciate you tuning in and um, empowering yourself um, with all this valuable, valuable information. We choose our guests very careful and very specific um, to spread important messages to the world. So please share our work with your friends, your mothers, your sisters, your colleagues, Um, especially today's episode. I feel like this episode is something that we really need to put um, a lot of emphasis on because it's not common knowledge yet. And we will be talking about jaw development um, and the importance of this, getting the start right. Um, we will be talking with Janae Gilchrist. She works um, for Curaden, and they're also a proud sponsor and partner with us this year. And I happen to get to know um, Janae as a, as a friend. She is, um, we have so many um, combined passions, and she's a very, very um, good teacher and educator, and she will be sharing also from her personal um, journey with jaw development as a, a as she experienced herself um, and really empower you with very, very valuable information. Um, We are all about prevention. Prevention is cure. And so this message is really, really key for everyone, really. Every person needs to know about this. So thank you for tuning in and I'm sure you'll enjoy this one. Janae, it's so good to have you with me again. Thank you so much for the invitation, Margaret. Yeah, welcome back. Janae, today you have a different hat on than the last time we spoke from the previous episodes for our attentive listeners and watchers. But just tell us a bit more about yourself and the work you do in and around this topic that we're talking about. Yes, thank you so much. So I think the last subject kind of is very dear to my heart is antenatal education. And that's kind of why you and I, um, you know, became familiar with each other. But this topic fits in so beautifully to that. So... I am from Curidan, South Africa, and we do a range of baby products. And actually the baby products, when I first looked at the soothers, I was like, "Mm, you know, most midwives don't really recommend soothers and they can cause damage. But the more I looked into this range, the more I just became really passionate about it. And um, so for the last six months, it's been my pet project. So I'm now really only focusing on baby and kids because it is my passion anyway. And so I'm very excited to give your mommy some information about um, choosing the correct soother. And it's more about the jaw, palate and tongue development. So it's what decisions can we make that'll have long-term effects in a positive way for our children. So I'm excited. I think there's such a lack of understanding and knowledge about this topic. I'm sure you see that so, so much. Yes. As you know, you have a personal journey, right? Yes. With this whole topic. Yeah, so it's really funny how, um, you know, life kind of has these sliding door moments. And I think this really has set me up for being one of the most passionate people about this subject. And it's, I mean, I've just had my orthodontics removed. I had lower jaw surgery. 
but you can hear that I'm still very nasal in the way I speak, and that's because I sucked my thumb for six years. Sure. It was a nightmare for my parents to get me off my thumb, and actually my palate is super high, um, and I'm going to be talking about why that is, but obviously your tongue shapes your palate. Your palate's soft as a baby. Mm. So I'm here to give mommy some information so that we don't all make that same mistake, because although I can have surgery to correct, correct my palate, it's super traumatic. Um, but that was also the reason why I'm, I was a mouth breather as a child, and hence had asthma and allergies and all sorts. Wow. So I really want to empower moms to give their children the best start so that we can try and avoid a lot of this stuff. You can't avoid it all, but it certainly can reduce it by at least 80%. So, yeah. Sure, no, you have a, you have a strong message to tell. <laughs> so what is it all about then? Just, just dive in. Yeah, so um, mm. I think I want to start off by saying, um, you know, we really advocate breastfeeding. And I'm not just saying that as a, I have to say that. Yes. I really want to say to moms, breastfeeding is a journey. Please, for all the moms out there, do some research on breastfeeding before you actually have your baby. It's something that you have to prepare yourself for. But there are amazing lactation consultants out there that are, are willing to help mommies. But this soother range, actually, the research that they did was all about breastfeeding. Because breastfeeding supports the natural development of the jaw, the tongue, the palate, and the teeth. And so we had to look at that research to kind of go, okay, if that's how it really works, what soother can we design? Because even if moms are breastfeeding, sometimes babies will use the breast as a soother. And so moms are exhausted. So introducing a soother is not a horrendous thing to do, but you've got to be aware of what soother you're going to be introducing. So first and foremost, I say establish your breastfeeding, get comfortable with your baby, and then when you're in a nice routine, you can start looking at a soother. Now for the mommies out there that are not breastfeeding or have chosen not to or can't, don't worry, bottle feeding is, we really advocate babies obviously first health, so we want to feed babies well, and you can still then choose the right soother for, for those babies. But really, what I wanted to say to mommies is, if you think about the child's palate, child's palate is soft when they're first born. So if you, you're going to use your imagination now. So saying this is a breast, my fingers are the nipple. If you slide your tongue from your teeth to the back of your throat, you can feel that you've got a hard palate and then it becomes soft. The best latch for a baby is where the nipple is right where that soft palate starts. And that's the perfect latch for your baby. And if the baby's latching like that, their tongues are sitting underneath your breast tissue and there's something called an infantile swallowing pattern. So what happens is baby's tongue lifts up, there's this peristaltic movement to the back, so like a ripple effect to the back, it opens the throat and that's what draws, it creates a vacuum and draws the milk out. So if we look at that, your tongue resting underneath the nipple, if you imagine your tongue is like a scaffolding, okay? At around six to eight months, baby's tongue will change from an infantile swallowing pattern to something called a mature swallowing pattern. And that's when the tongue lifts up, but then it bulks at the back and it throws the food into the throat. And that's really important because mm. this is about the time that people start experimenting with food, yes. giving babies different things to eat. And so if the tongue never develops this mature swallowing pattern, babies often, when you put food in their mouth, they'll gag because their tongues don't know what to do with it. So now, if you think about that, your tongue moves from this infantile swallowing pattern to a mature swallowing pattern. If you've got a huge, big, round soother in the mouth, the tongue gets stuck behind the soother. It cannot cradle. And so what happens is, is the tongue develop, development doesn't happen naturally, and they still keep this infantile swallowing pattern. And these are the children that you see that thrust their tongue when they swallow. Hmm. So a really interesting question is, how many times do you think we swallow our saliva a day? I have no idea. And now that I've said swallowing your saliva, you kind of go... You do it. <laughs> and then you're like, it's quite difficult to swallow, right? Yes. <laughs> so it's something that happens if... It just happens in our bodies autonomically, okay? So it's, it's governed by our autonomic nervous system. But actually, we swallow between 1,500 and 2,000 times a day. Wow. So if your baby is thrusting their tongue forward... You can imagine that that is pushing their teeth every few seconds through the front. Wow. 
So that's how much damage we're doing if the tongue doesn't develop this mature swallowing pattern because eventually what should happen is as they swallow, the tongue just moves up to the palate and, it, and backwards. If this doesn't develop, the whole jaw's moving very differently. So not only are we making it much more harder for babies to swallow, every time their tongue thrusts forward, you're actually disrupting the gums and this is when you get the teeth that come out in this formation rather than straight down. So your tongue formation's not forming. Also, their resting position for their tongue is not where yours and mine is. So if anybody's nasal breathing, they'll feel that their tongue is up against the palate. It's sort of your tip of your tongue's just behind your upper teeth and then your tongue stuck onto your palate. That's natural resting position and that holds your, your jaw in place. Mm. If baby's palate is super soft and that tongue's beautifully nestled there, the tongue grows with the jaw and the palate. And that's when your tongue muscle also develops. Now, if you're putting in a very round soother, the palate forms over that soother. So what happens is the palate becomes arched, so it heightens and it becomes narrower. And then what happens is because your jaw's narrower, when your teeth come through, they come through crowded. So there are soothers on the market that really support palate development, but please look at your soother. Show us. I'm going to show you one here. And it, I mean, I show this often and people are like, that is such a weird soother, right? So you can see here that this soother is super flat. Now, the most amazing thing is, Mahret, you can actually see, so I'm going to show you closer up on the, on the, on the screen in a moment. But Mahret, you know, when babies are first born, all babies are actually nasal breathers. Okay, unless there's an obstruction, a physical deformity or obstruction, they are all nasal breathers. Correct. And sometimes babies' noses will be so stuffy and you think, oh, how's this child going to eat? And actually they do anyway and they still nasal breathe. So if this is a natural process for us, mouth breathing is not. Now, if you put in a very round soother, you can imagine there are balls here. The shaft of that soother is also going to be round. So babies' lips can't close. So we're actually training our babies to be mouth breathers as well. Oh, wow. Which is insane, right? So your lip mus muscles don't even develop well. Now this one, and I'll, I'll, as I say, I'll pass it on to um, have a, a close-up in a minute. You can see here, very, very small um, shaft. It's very flat. Baby's lips can seal beautifully. Mm. The little nodule doesn't have to be big. You know, Mahret, if you put your finger into your baby's mouth and just touch the palate, they already start suckling. And babies start suckling at 20 weeks during your pregnancy. They start suckling in the womb. So it's such a natural thing because they have to feed. So the ball here is super small. And what that means is, is it just has to touch the palate and babies will start suckling. And then once they finish suckling, it can fall out. And you'll see our membrane here is very, very soft. So that mimics breast tissue as well. Beautiful. So... You don't have to buy this particular soother, but certainly look for a soother that's got these characteristics. Mouth can close, bubble small enough to be able to fall out when baby stops suckling, and then a very, very soft um, back. The other thing is, um, Mahret, that we really advocate is not to upgrade the size of the soother, which is something so alien. All soothers will say six to eight months or you know, 12 to, to 14 months or whatever, and we say don't. And the reason for that is we actually want that tongue that is, if it can, nestle under the soother, to start taking over that suckling reflex. And so weaning becomes a lot more easy as well. Wow, it's got an impact on everything. It really does. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. So good. Um, and I can imagine that the thumb sucking is the same effect as that round, thick exactly. soother. I would say that the one biggest thing is, if you are finding that your baby's sucking a thumb, introduce a soother because at least with a soother, you can take it away. A thumb is super difficult to wean people, uh, babies off. Um, also, your thumb is shaped perfectly, so it sits in your palate, and it really arches that palate. If you're baby sucking fingers, so often, I think when you've done 3D scans, you've seen it, babies are sucking their fingers or their toe. If they're sucking fingers and it's flat on the tongue, it's not as bad. Mm. But I would say if you can introduce a really good soother, so um, I'll actually send you, Mahriet, some information that we can maybe put on the site for um, the listeners, is we've actually got two bigger sizes in our soothers. So we do have a size one and two. But actually, these soothers 
are correctional soothers. So once the damage is maybe already done, and you've seen these children where the molars, actually the back teeth are biting, but there's a nice, what we call an open bite, so that the front teeth can't actually touch. And we then introduce these soothers, and over a period of months, just by correcting, using the correct soother, we actually correct their bite. That's amazing. So it's really, um, yeah, we do have a one and two, but we don't stock these everywhere because we really want people who are buying them to understand the principle behind it. It's, it's really important for us. It makes sense. So even if you feel like it's too late, yeah. <laughs> we can correct it still with, with sucking, sucking because it's still very pliable. It's all not formed. It's still growing. Isn't that the beautiful thing? It's amazing. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So Janelle, I was also thinking, listening now, um, yes, we promote breastfeeding by all means um, because it's just, again, nature's way is just the best Absolutely. for so many things. We yes. don't even think about it. Um, but what for about the the nipples the the bottles the bottles yes yes the feeding bottles so mm. and that's you know the one question I get when I do these talks um, to groups of women the first thing is like but oh my baby's you know drinking from a bottle think about the time at where they're using a bottle though so it's going to be for their feeds but it's going to be ten to fifteen minutes. Mm. So it's not doing the long term damage that sometimes a soother can do. For me, the most important thing is, is if you're introducing something very round and the tongue's not in the right position, that's the most important. Because what happens then is you stop the tongue from developing. If the soother can have the tongue underneath, at least then when the soother's not in the mouth, the tongue is acting in the right way. Because this, this tongue thrusting swallowing is a huge, huge issue. Um, because along with tongue thrusting comes open mouth breathing. Can I just touch on mouth versus Absolutely. nasal breathing? Yes, all ties in. I, yes, it's so so vital, and I love this subject so much. So, um, I am really fascinated by breathing, and because we do it so naturally, I think often people don't understand breathing um, and and what actually happens. But nasal breathing actually is our first line of defence, if we think about it logically. So, as you breathe through the nose, you've got these little tiny hairs in your nose, but also there's a mucus and it's antibacterial. If you breathe through your nose, you also produce something called nitric oxide, and nitric oxide is only produced in the nasal cavity, in the nasal passage, and it actually makes sure that you get your oxygen to your blood, uh, to your organs, your blood first, and then your organs in your brain. It's between 10 and 18% more oxygen if hmm. you breathe through your nose than through your mouth. Is that crazy in a developing baby? That's like an insane amount of oxygen more. Wow. So even things like ADHD, ADD, the first thing that should be asked is, is your child mouth breathing or nasal breathing? So we want to support that as a baby and make sure that that's how they're growing up. Because the longer they mouth breathe, the more training they've got to do to actually nasal breathe. Second thing is, is if we're mouth breathing, you're drying out the airway. Mm. You're also taking in air that's not filtered and it's also not temperature regulated. Your nose also regulates the temperature. So often these children have got respiratory issues because if it's cold outside, they're breathing in that cold air. Tonsillitis because they're drying out the airway. So mouth breathing, they can take in a lot more breath, but actually it's drying out that airway. So tonsillitis, polyps. Um, and then the most fascinating thing is if they're tongue thrusting every time they swallow, and it's such a micro movement that parents won't even notice, but your pediatric dentist will. The jaw actually has to move down and out and then back. So it's almost a square shape every time they swallow. That's between 1,500 and 2,000 times a day. It means that your TMJ joint, which is this joint that where your jaw meets your ear or your skull, actually starts wearing out. Hmm. And these children later on in life have clicky jaws or problems with their TMJ, headaches, concentration issues. Unbelievable. Ear infections. Mm. I mean, this list goes on and on. Sure. Yeah. Prevention so, is it, eh? Wow. Yeah, so if we, mm. and, and I love what you say, Mahriet, is this nature knows best. Yes. And so I would urge every mum to breastfeed. However, we've learned from that. And so there are things that you can do to still help children have that natural development. Mm. Um, but for me, breastfeeding is not just the breast milk, which we know is like gold, right? Absolutely. But it's also about these other things that follow on from, mm, from breastfeeding. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, breastfeeding is so much, actually. It's not just feeding, it's yes. development, it's bonding, it's connection. <laughs> um, sure. It's so fascinating. Every time I listen to you, there's like something new I, 
I pick up. But I think the if you want to forget all the details, the core message is just to um, to get the right soother if exactly. the baby. And it is true. I know the babies sometimes need the soother because they yes. they're just born with this sucking need. It's not always a feed. They're not always necessarily hungry. They just want to suck. Yes. It's um it soothes them. So. And I think yeah. that point is so important. And as a midwife, you've seen that, right? Absolutely. Is and then you get some babies that don't need that. They don't have that huge need to suck, mm. but about 70% of babies, as I said, they'll all start suckling in, in uterus, right, in the womb, because it's a natural thing, because they need to survive with suckling. But 70% of babies have this extra need for soothing as well. And there's actually a point in the palate that when it's stimulated, it releases a hormone that relaxes babies. Mm. I mean, it's incredible. we are so incredibly designed. We really are. Yeah. Wow. We are miracles. Yeah. Yes. There's actually even a, um, I mean, it's amazing, a gland behind their eyes. So when babies are tired, they'll rub their eyes. There's actually a gland behind their eyes that also secretes a hormone that releases something that relaxes them when they're sleepy. Yeah. Wow. So they rub their eyes automatically. We're so amazingly well designed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Incredible, hey? Yeah. Yeah, we absolutely are. Wow. So. So good, such vital, vital information. Um, in terms of cost, because I can imagine the, you, you have all ranges of yes. damage. So if, if you're looking for a, a soother, mm. um, then how long does your soothers last? Yeah, so I think exactly. So it's that false economy, right? So yes. our, um, the Curaprox soother is a little bit expensive. It's around 320 Rand um, retail price. But what I would say is you don't upgrade the size. So, yeah. of course, you might need one for at home, maybe one at Granny's house or something like that. But if you put it in perspective, and I know it's having babies is an expensive story, um, it's the price of a packet of nappies. Sure. Which, if you really compare that, and nappies you use in three or four days, that packet of nappies will be done, right? So, 300 rand sounds a lot, but it's actually not that bad. Mm. And you never upgrade the size. Yeah. So if you look after the soother and you don't lose it, obviously that's another issue, but we've got clips, mm -hmm. then that's, you know, that you can keep until baby weans themselves off. Yeah, and yeah. to prevent orthodontic bills and surgery like yourself exactly. down the line and yeah. all of that. And mm. I must say that, you know, uh, we've got a lovely booklet um, called The Milestone Moments, and we, we distribute it through to midwives and anybody who's you know, works with mommies. But for the mommies out there, investing in your child's oral health is so important because the, did you know the number one reason for children admission to hospitals is tooth decay? Yeah. Wow. It's su super sad, sad. because it's, it's really preventable. Mm. Yeah. And I would say to moms, you know, we want to make sure babies aren't choking, but let them play with things in their mouth. Let them experiment. Mm -hmm. So for me, things like teethers, which you kind of think, does, do they need a teether, don't they? But I'll tell you what the importance of a teether, a good teether is. A good teether will be able to, they'll bite on it. So obviously it will help with, for teething, which is what it's designed for. But the more nodules and ripples and little filaments and, you know, bubbly bits that you can put on there and the more different textures it actually exposes your baby to textures in the mouth. Mm. So when you start feeding them solid food, they're not so fussy. Interesting, yeah. So we've had moms that have said, my baby grew up on six years of pro-neutro, right? Like, great, but... Um, not like, ideal. Let's try and... <laughs> <laughs> so the more you expose them to textures when they're little, the better. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love that. Uh, I bought one for my sister and her baby, and he loves Fabulous. it. Fabulous. Yeah. yeah. And it's so it's tiny favorite. because they can hold it. Yeah. No, yeah. they really enjoy it. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. Um, we can talk about a lot of things. I mean, I think the whole teething decay is like a whole other oh, story. We've got a whole podcast, podcast <laughs> dedicated to it. We can, um, if you look back, we have with the dentist and the yes. oral hygienist. It was fascinating as well. But prevention is cure always. Hey? There's so much if we just knew. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I think very often we'll get parents who say, oh, I'll pay for orthodontics later. I think my main message today, if you don't take anything other than this away, is <clears throat> yes, we can correct our teeth with orthodontics. But I want you to think about the breathing, the sinus effect, the allergies, the ADHD. Sure. Because actually what that feeds into is a child who, I mean, imagine receiving 10% less oxygen to your brain all the time, right? Developmentally, mm. it's a challenge. 
But later on, it's things like sleep apnea, and that's such a huge topic right now. Mm. So a lot of adults are suffering with sleep apnea, and that affects blood pressure, cholesterol, heart disease. Mm. Um, it's even linked to dementia. So we really want to make sure that our breathing is super you know, super efficient. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Support your child's breathing and make sure they, they stay nasal breathers. They're born that way. So. Yes, they're born that way. That's really key. Yeah. 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 And they can relearn it again. Exactly. If it has gone over. Yes. Uh, haywire. Yes, yeah. That's a good key message. Any other last Thank key goodness. messages or you feel like... I think, no, I, I mean, there's a lot, right? There's a lot for your <laughs> listeners. And I know I um, sometimes people are like, Tanae, you go so overboard and it's not that bad. But I really do feel that it is. And, and it's only because I've had my own journey. Mm. Um, <clears throat> my daughter had a soother. And thankfully, her, her damage is minimal. But then she tried to f force her brother to also take a soother. And he wasn't having any, any of it. And I can tell you, I have two very different children. Yeah. Um, if only I'd known then what I know now, you yeah. know, um, I think that's the beauty of it is mm. the Sister Lillian Center really gives you as mommies this beautiful information and then you can really mm. implement it. Yeah. yeah, run with it. Yeah. And we can only do better when we know better, right? Exactly. Knowledge yeah. is key. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you so much for, um, for everything that you shared today. I think it's so important. We really need to emphasize this message. You know, yeah. there's like different messages that get emphasized a lot, but I feel this one is for now. Yeah, it's amazing. Right? Yeah, yeah, it needs to be emphasized. So yeah. we will um, we will spread it wide and far. Thank you. The, the news of prevention and good jaw development. Yes. Thank you so much, my friend. Thanks for all the work you do and for partnering with us that we can do all of this work yeah. as well. Now we're very Kieran. excited. Yes, it's a wonderful partnership thank and you. so needed. So thank you everyone thank for you, tuning in and put this all to test. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you enjoyed this video, please share this with a friend who will benefit from this. And remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can be notified whenever we release new videos like this on our channel. We'd love to stay in touch and keep you updated with all our latest content and resources to equip and empower you. So if you're a midwife or any type of birth and baby worker, go to sensitivemidwifery.co.za slash free gift. If you're a mom, visit sisterlillian.co.za slash free gift for more training and resources. That way we can keep you up to date when we release new episodes like this plus a few other bonuses. You can also find the links I just mentioned in the show notes. Remember, you're making a big difference because you are shaping the future of humankind. Thanks for watching and I look forward to journeying with you.